we're talking about uh, the mechanics of how uh, we as a team design and build a class and how you as players will be able to uh, interact uh, with the class system in EverQuest Next. So that should frame the kind of things you, you can expect to hear from these guys up here. And uh, going across the, you're gonna click. Uh, going across, uh, I'd like to introduce the people that are here. Welcome, Steve, by the way. Uh, Michael Mann on the end, uh, he's our uh, class and combat lead. Steve Klug, who you've met before, is our technical director. Aaron Carlson here on the end is our lead animator. Michelle Shade is our principal FX artist. And Darren McPherson sitting in the middle is our lead designer, so. Yeah. Are we ready? So if you've been to the previous ones, we give away a free Nagy hat uh, in all of our panels. So Darren's got the question for you this time. All right, so what was Firiona Vi's original character class? What, what, what did she start as? Gentlemen right here. All right. Correct. You are correct, sir. Paladin. 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 Yes. Paladin. yes, the answer was Paladin. Weird, but yes, it's true. All right, so uh, let's get into it. Let's, let's, let's start. Are we, is everyone excited? Suggestion, and, um, and then I'm going to go into some details. So uh, the very first thing that we do is we, we sit down as a group. Um, there's a group of, of class designers and other designers, and, and we really involve, try to involve everybody um, at, at, on, the, on the team. And we talk about what sort of feelings we want the class to ev evoke. Um, do we want you to feel very powerful? Do we want you to feel um, stealthy? Do we want you to feel brutish or strong? Um, what, when you feel and when you, when you think, and I saw you say the word feeling uh, a lot here, um, but that's really what we want. We want you to be emotional about your character class. Um, and so and that's, that really guides a lot of the decisions that we've made. So the second thing that we do is we look at the iconic abilities that these types of classes, say the warrior, has had in the past. And then we integrate it into our new functionality. You know, we have been talking a lot about destructibility. Is anyone here excited about destructibility? Okay. So does destructibility completely change the game or what? Yes. yes. So when we, when we sit down and we talk about these classes, we, we integrate them into all the new things that we're doing, and we come up with some really exciting things. And then we talk about iconic characters from, from media, um, from literature, <clears throat> things that, that people gravitate toward. Um, these are iconic characters that, that people have loved for years, and they've loved them for very specific reasons because they do evoke these emotions. Um, so <clears throat> let me, let's walk through the process of, of what the warrior is. We decided that we wanted the warrior to be destructive and strong. And when you play a warrior, we want you to feel like a brute, like a bull in a china shop. You don't do things delicately as a warrior, okay? You, you, know, you, don't, you don't hold fragile things, you don't serve at a dinner party, right? You are violent and you are destructive. Um, so we give him, we've given him some abilities, Leap, Whirlwind, Shield Bash, all of these abilities um, push him toward um, this goal. And he, the iconic characters that we, the, uh, among the iconic characters um, that we associate with him are the Juggernaut, right, this unstoppable force, and the Hulk, who is, who is this raging beast, and, you know, the Hulk doesn't serve at dinner parties. So this is a, this is a, uh, these are, th and uh, we don't do this because we want them to have green skin, or we want them to have, uh, you know, the Sidorak gem, or any of that stuff. We do this so that um, we, get, we get an idea, and then we can say, hey, when we talk to Aaron and Michelle, we think, okay, these are the iconic characters, and I'll show, you, I'll show you what that means here. So, our warrior is a wrecking ball. We just saw, I'm going to play this again. So, this is the warrior's leap. So, <clears throat> these are some iconic poses in the leap. You see the, the middle pose there when he's in the air. Who does that look like? Arms, arms bent back, right? We, the reason that comic book artists have used these poses is because you know, this very simple and easy way for you to denote power and strength. Um, and these, these poses are associated with these things, and we want you to feel powerful and strong when you're playing. <clears throat> so it also has to be fun. We run everything through what we call the fun filter, and um, all of our abilities need to be very fun to play. Um, we, you don't have a lot of abilities in this game as a character class. Remember, you've got lots of character classes. You'll actually have far more character classes than you do have on a class uh, for abilities. So uh, we make sure that each one of these is fun and each one of these promotes the type of gameplay and feeling that we want for each class. 
Uh, we also make sure that they're fun to look at. If things are fun to, to use, um, but no one is impressed when you use them, and no one and you're not impressed when you use them, um, then then we've missed the point. And so you know, Aaron and Michelle, and uh, and the particle team and the animation team, uh, some of which are here in the audience. If you if you wave your hand if you're if you're on the EQ Next team and you do some of this stuff. So there's Lisa in the back, and and uh, you know, so we've got lots of lots of great uh, people who are very invested in this. Um, <clears throat> For example, uh, Lisa in the back did the, the Void Goliath, uh, the particles, when he, when he raises his fists and, he, and the, the, the fountains of destruction come up. Did that evoke emotion? Did people like that? Do you guys like that? Okay. Each one of our abilities should feel awesome. We, we really want players to, uh, to, to look at other people and go, oh, wow, what did he just do? And in our game, you can be what he is. You don't have to reroll an all. You can just go collect that class. Um, so <clears throat> let's see. This is, this is Aaron's. You want to talk a little bit, Aaron? Yeah, OK. So let's take a look at some of the classes in EQ next. Um, we're going we're gonna to focus in on just uh, three that show a good example of how the classes differ, because all three of these are using the two-handed sword. So what we talk about a lot in animation for the classes, we talk about personality. We want a specific personality to come across. Even in the stances and the silhouettes, are they stoic? Are they high energy? Are they creepy or sinister? We want to make sure that we broadcast that in every aspect of the class, in st starting from just their, their general posing, so that when you're playing that class, you really feel like you're carrying that persona. And then we carry that on into the abilities. And we work with design to make sure that we're hitting those marks, we're hitting the iconics that we want to sell. Yeah. And so. You can see in these animations as, as, they, as they loop through um, that we really wanted players to feel um, there was a, there was a heaviness to them. Uh, Billy spoke about this yesterday in the panel that we had. Um, there's weight when you land as a character class. You 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 as a, as a warrior. There's weight. There's gravity. Sound adds to this. The particles add to this, um, and the, the the roar of the cairn adds to this. It's very good. <clears throat> So let's get down to some, to some brass tacks, some nuts and bolts here. Um, so at this point, you, you know what the, the character class process is for us. We do this for every character class. We've got a lot of them, but we really are committed to making each one of them feel amazing. Um, <clears throat> so your class, when you pick a class, it determines your armor, the types of armor you can wear. Um, each class has a single armor, uh, a type, plate, or cloth, or leather. Um, and the weapons that you can use. Each, each class comes with a pair of weapons that they can use. And uh, weapon abilities are also determined, and the character abilities are also determined by your character class choice. The weapon abilities, uh, weapons in our game are more than just models with statistics on them. Um, they, they're meaningful to you. Not only um, are, do each, and as I mentioned yesterday, not only do all of the items in the game, uh, particularly the armor and the weapons, have mechanics around them, so you would have a choice between using, say, a uh, Kinosian longsword versus um, a dwarven longsword. Um, those, there's mechanics in there, but your weapons um, determine the four unique abilities that your character class has when they wield them. And if you have a pair of character classes, so let's say we have the warrior and a, an additional class that we're not naming, um, that both use a sword and shield. The, the warrior, he has a, he has a leap attack when, as part of, this, as part of this, uh, these weapon abilities. This other class might have a hammer throw. So not all the, the, each individual class has unique abilities based on these weapons. Um, so there are more than just stats and damage. And um, we, really, we really wanted these abilities to, <clears throat> to magnify and to further the goals, which are that you should feel um, something. You, your feeling should be evoked when you play these individual classes. One thing that I'd like to add, thanks everyone. I decided I wanted to come up and kibitz. Jeff the Butler, <laughs> hello. Um, one thing that's also very important, which you, uh, you might have seen if you were looking very closely at, at Aaron's visualizations of a two-handed sword wielding character. He had three different characters up there. Each one of them had the exact same two-handed sword in their hand. And they were three different character classes, but they weren't carrying the sword in the same way. They weren't animating in the same way. So when we talk about the, the, this, the, the variety of weapons that player characters are going to wield, clearly two-handed swords are probably going to be carried by more than one class. And you might ask yourself, if, if one class is standing there in full heavy plate carrying a two-handed sword and so is another one, how do I tell the difference between them? If I, for instance, 
you know, if I see him an NPC, how do I know what abilities he's going to use on me if I can't tell what class he is? And the answer is, you will be able to tell what class he is because he will be standing in a different way. He will be in a different pose. He will animate differently. Um, and Aaron's videos actually showed that pretty clearly. One guy might carry his two-handed sword behind him all the time. That might be his starting pose. The other guy might carry it like up over his head and swing downward with most of his primary attacks. It's all about visual silhouette and then that, that sense of recognition that you'll gain as a player from watching them move in the world and you become familiar with. Yeah, so we talked about this, this visual language is our terminology, um, and that is not only uh, in the animations, uh, the character classes, so that, you know, you've got a lot of classes, how do you know who's who? Well, you can, you can tell, and this is, there's a lot of player knowledge here, so experienced players will be able to tell um, the NPCs from each other, will be able to tell the character classes from one another. Um, and uh, so that's, that's very important to us. So let's go over character abilities. Um, character abilities are, um, <clears throat> Well, they come in four different, different flavors, and these are non-weapon specific abilities. Um, the very first one is movement. So a movement might be a teleport or a leap or a jump. Um, offense might be fireball. It might be a uh, magic missile. Uh, defensive might be a shield wall or a spell reflect. And utility could be things like um, a de-summon spell or an invisibility spell or the ability to, to, to have clones appear uh, to distract en 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 enemies. Um, and these all are very important, and you'll, we'll, Michael Mann will give you some, some, uh, some different examples. But, so each character class has a unique um, or semi-unique uh, set of these abilities. We wanted the Blade Master to, to have all four of these things because he does all of these things in equal measure, whereas the Rogue is a very offensive uh, character class but has a lot, of a lot of tricks up his sleeve, so he gets too offensive and too utility. Rogues may take offense at that. <clears throat> They are very offensive, yes. Um, the wizard, he needs to be able to move around the battlefield and be able to defend himself, so he gets a pair of movement abilities, a defense slot, and an offense slot. Now, obviously, he's got his weapon abilities, too, so that's, that's part of the way that he does his damage. Um, and the Tempest, which is a character class that you'll see at the very end of this, um, and we got some really cool, unique animations and particles to, to, uh, to further exemplify what our goals are. Um, He's also movement-oriented. He does, one of his things is he moves around the, war, around the battlefield, um, and he's has, he has um, you know, a pair of movement abilities, um, offensive and utility ability. So, as we mentioned yesterday, you get to collect all of these classes. As you're adventuring through the world, you'll have the opportunity to find and collect these classes. Um, and every class is advanced individually. So you may have a tier four warrior and a tier two wizard and a tier one rogue, and a, you know, all of these things are, are, are different. So and you can choose um, who, who you play at any given time. Um, swapping between them um, with relative ease outside of combat. We're still working on all the technical um, issues with this, um, <clears throat> but it's, it's, it's important to us for you to have the freedom of choice, and we'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. This really opens up a lot of new gameplay. I know there's a lot of people who, who really just want to ever be one class, but the way multi-classing works, and Michael will explain this in a minute, you really want to get more things. Um, and we have, we have confidence that, that most of you will, will love to play this way. Playing how you want, where you want, and when you want is a, is a big goal for us. Um, any progression that you earn while playing, let's say, your warrior, can be applied to any of the character classes that you've, you've progressed. So you don't just have to be your warrior to advance your warrior. This isn't a skill-based game. So we hope that, that that's something that's exciting to you. Does that some, sound like some, something that's cool? Opens up a lot of freedom. So often, so often you, you may want to play an, an alt or, in, in our case, uh, a different class, but your friends are doing something that you want to be part of. And you're like, okay, well, I guess I don't have choice there. And choice is a big thing for us. Um, so we thought it would be nice to have this flexibility. Um, we also want you to, to, to feel free to play what you want, when you want, uh, regardless of whether it's a raid or a group. EverQuest Next does not require the use of tanks and healers. Our combat mechanics and our AI do not support dedicated, dedicated healers um, and focused, focused, uh, dedicated healers and focused tanks. We, we, it doesn't, doesn't work. Uh, we don't want a group of people, um, which has happened to everybody in this room, if you've ever done anything that involves a group, to, to be stuck not being able to do the content that you want because your buddy didn't log in, who happens to be the one role that you need. Um, and that was a big thing for us, to be able to play what you want, when you want. Um, 
and our combat model, uh, which we're not talking about in detail today, um, but we really want it to be a, a, very, a very visceral, active, movement-oriented um, gameplay style um, that really has everybody responsible for their own safety and everybody is, is able to be part of the action. Before you pop off that slide, Darren. Oh. Pop back. Um, one thing that we've been asked fairly often um, related to the player characters that this slide exemplifies fairly well is the, is the concept that characters would be able to choose the appearance of, of, of their individual avatar. She's a great example of a heavily armored, fully armored female warrior. Um, you know, people, people should understand that we're providing everyone the choice. Um, it can't be overemphasized because people continue to ask us a, about the same issue. Uh, you will be able to choose how your character looks. You can have a sexy outfit. Uh, you can have a fully, heavily armored appearance, um, whatever suits your needs. And that's a great concept piece uh, that kind of answers that question for people. Can you guys hear me? Super loud? Woohoo! Perfect. <clears throat> so in EverQuest Next, we want you to be able to build the character that you want. Uh, it's very important to us. It's something we talk about a lot, actually. Uh, as you play through the game, you are able to collect many classes, and you use those abilities in the character abilities to uh, create different class builds that match your personality and your play style. Right? So uh, I'm just going to get into it. I think the best way to explain multi-classing is just to go through an example. Right? So here is, uh, here's a warrior. Uh, you guys got to see the warrior during the debut? Yes? Uh, did, you, did you like how, how it looked like he played? I was the warrior, by the way. I got to go through. And it, thank you. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, sure, sure. Uh, so I, I enjoyed playing the warrior. I thought, he was, I thought he was actually a lot of fun. You know, he goes and he, he has a strong, a strong personality, right? He, he crashes down on the ground and he, he feels powerful when I play him. He's very destructive. I thought that was very cool. Um, I think I might, there, were, there were several examples where the warrior would have gone down if the wizard had not been there to DPS. <laughs> who was who DPS? playing the wizard? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think I was probably the wizard. In integral, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Whatever, dude. Uh, <laughs> uh, anyway, so, uh, you know, that, that felt really cool, and that, that was something that, that was very enjoyable. But that might not be for every situation. It might not fit my mood or, or whatever it is. I might want to change uh, that to do something a little more particular to what I want to do. Uh, I might want to give her, uh, you know, maybe a slightly darker personality or, uh, you know, make her kill casters, uh, you know, a lot easier or make, make her a little more sneaky. Uh, and that's where multi-classing comes in, and we're going we're gonna to discuss that uh, right now. So you can't just go about by taking all the abilities you get from all your other classes and just like throwing them into a pot and then being like, all right, I've got a, I've got a class, it's so awesome, it's got everything. Uh, there's an economy to creating your class, and, and I'll kind of explain what that means. It's kind of a, a heavy term. When you pick your, your class, uh, it, it comes with a couple of things, as Darren mentioned earlier, right? It comes with the type of armor you, you wear, the type of weapon you wield, and also your weapon abilities. These, these three things form the core of your class, and you, you cannot change those as long as you're that class, right? Uh, so as a warrior, for instance, I have, I have heavy armor. I have, uh, in, in the demo, we had a, a hammer and a shield, and then I have a, a number of weapon abilities. Uh, Forceful Blow was his basic attack. It was the one where he smashes the ground, and you, you, know, you see dist uh, uh, the distortion and all that cool stuff. Those all come with, with your class. Uh, and then we have character abilities. Character abilities also come with your class, but that's where you can adjust things. So I made this awesome slide. I had to show it. I highlighted those. I'm not an artist, so I was pretty proud of this. Uh, um, um, amazing work. <laughs> yes. Well, uh, Give him a round. Give him a round, please. Uh, Impressive effects. We, we, we aim to please. So uh, <laughs> these, these are the areas that you cannot customize in your class. Uh, and we're going to talk about the, the character abilities. Uh, right now, that's most of the area. There are other areas, but we'll fill you guys in on the basics first, and then in the future, we'll, we'll bring out more information on customization. Uh, so the, the character abilities. Uh, I started with leap. You see me, I, I leap over things. And uh, I, you know, when, I, when I come down, I, I smash. And actually, in, in the demo, I, I leapt over way too many things. And we had to 
to redo that a couple times. He kept well, flying off. I apologize, yes. Uh, but anyway, we, that leap doesn't fit the, the theme of what we talked about, right? We want to make a dark character. We wanted to make it so it was a little sneak here. And, you know, me flying through the air like Hulk isn't very sneaky, right? Uh, and, and I also want to be able to kill casters a little bit easier. So we're actually going to, we're going to kick out leap. And I'm going to look through all of the classes that I'm able to unlock. I, I check through them and I, I try and find a teleport and hopefully one that has a dark flavor to it. So I cruise over and I, I find a class that has that. I'm like, yes, sweet. I go and I, I unlock that class and I advance it up to the point where I, where I can get that ability. We're gonna call this ability Path of Shadows. So I find a dude, I level him up, I unlock it and I equip it. Now, instead of leap, I can use Path of Shadows. Path of Shadows is a, a, you know, a shadow flavored teleport ability. Uh, I equip that. And uh, now I'm able to, to sneak up on casters and, and do things. But as I'm playing, I find out that you know, what I really want to do is teleport in and Whirlwind. But Whirlwind and, and, and Path of Shadows are too expensive to use together, right? Uh, because Path of Shadows does some other things other than teleport. So that's a problem. But don't worry, it's a, it's a problem we actually fix with itemization. So we, we talk about how items aren't necessarily just items. You know, we, we don't come into the game and it's not just an icon with a model and a, and a group of stats. You actually use the items to adjust your abilities. So in this instance, the example is I get this awesome ring that looks kind of like the one ring. Um, it, doesn't, it doesn't make me invisible. But what it does do is it allows me to teleport. It makes all of my teleport abilities cost less energy, right? So what that allows me to do is I, I, I equip it. I can now Path of Shadows and Whirlwind, you know, right, uh, one right after another. So I create, I go through and I create these combos. And this is just one small combo, actually. Uh, our abilities are all categorized and, and stuff like this, and we have different effects on all the, all the items that allow you to do this to your heart's content. Like, we really want to make these things important to your class builds. You, uh, you can adjust and create many, many of these. So this is just one example. Um, so now we're, now we're going to build this guy. We're going to finish out, because you get the general idea, I think. You guys, you guys understand it? Cool, awesome, all right. How, uh, how cool is that? Is that, is that cool? Does that sound good? Okay. <laughs> Very nice. Um, so I'm going to repeat this process, right? I go through and I find a class that has mana burn. I equip that in my offensive slot because it does damage. Uh, I find a you know, spell reflect from a different class. I equip that and I, I get unsummon. Uh, you know, in case, in case they have pets or, or anything like that, I can unsummon them. So now I am, I am an anti-caster. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to teleport in. I'm going to just destroy these guys. And that's my character build, right? I go and I also collect some items that match the types of abilities that these are. I can, I can get a bunch of items that change my teleport, or I can get some items that change each one of uh, the, in, you know, the individual types of abilities if I want. And so now you guys can start to see where the play from the different character ability uh, loadouts come into, come into play, right? So I have this. Uh, I have one of each type, but there are classes that have two offensive and, and, and whatnot. And so uh, the, the way you build your classes will be different based on the base class that you have. Uh, and all, all that's left to do now is to save off your class build so that you're able to use it, uh, use it when, when, uh, when you want. And so uh, I, I call this one, I actually call it the Mage Pain. Uh, when you save it off, you're able to call it whatever you'd like. Uh, and what, what's important to note is, you know, this is something that we want you guys to experiment, to you know, express creativity and play around with. Uh, you know, if you want to make a, a sneaky archer, you're welcome to. If you have, I don't know, like a dark elf ranger that you've been dying to create, uh, <laughs> you're, you're able to do that as well. Uh, so that's an example of that. Now, so now we have a, we have a video of, of the Tempest that, that we were able to put together. Now this Tempest class is, uh, it's multi-class with some of the abilities uh, from the demo. Um, so here it is. Uh, this Tempest, the Tempest is a storm flavored class. He has a two handed sword and he focuses on uh, moving around a lot and doing a, a basically devastating attacks, right? Uh, as you can see, his, those are his weapon abilities, uh, not that one. Uh, now we're getting into the, the, the character abilities. Um, so really, you get, you get quite a bit of functionality and differentiation uh, between all of your different classes. And you can see here the dramatic posing and, and all that sort of stuff. So, um, so we're going to open it up to Q&A, you guys. So um, one thing that I wanted to ask, how many people here have played Magic the Gathering? How many people have, here have played League of Legends? <clears throat> so I think a lot of you will understand a key concept that we're, that we're trying to push here, and that is that every time a new expansion comes out in Magic the Gathering, every time they add a new character in League of Legends, it alters the strategic landscape of the game. So. 
Every time we add new items to this game, every time we add a new character class to the game, the strategic landscape is altered. Um, it keeps things fresh, keeps people who care about the, the minutia of, uh, of character building and playing the game eternally interested and evergreen in terms of what's going on. Um, you know, what's, what's the best set of items and what's the best set of abilities for me to execute exactly what I like to do every Saturday night when I go raiding with my buddies? so on and so forth. Um, it's not the same static game from month to month.